Final Score Friday. The only local TV sports coverage in town with sports director Lane Casadante and Sean Robertson. Sponsored by Loyalty Automotive and Richmond Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to week two of Final Score Friday. Sean and Lane here joined by the cheerleaders from Hermitage on a very unbalanced week. Thanks to the holiday and the prevalence of Thursday night games, most of our teams had already played before today, and that includes the Panthers, whom we'll get to in a few minutes, and one of our games of the week. But the big one this week was still saved for Friday night. Of course, five years ago when Holland Springs and Manchester both won state titles and both were undefeated, everyone wanted to know who, what would happen if they played. What if? It didn't happen that year, but it did happen the next year and every year since that they've been allowed to play each other. It's number one versus number three in our high school coaches poll and for the most part has usually been really competitive. The two winningest programs in the Richmond region since 2018 were on hand and a capacity crowd in the East End were there to see the Springers and the Lancers. In the second quarter, Christian Martin, Christian Force, 20 yards, 20 to 14 Springers at the break. Third quarter, Springers muff the punt, it rolls into the end zone and Jaden Ballard pounces on it to give Manchester a 21-20 lead. Fourth quarter, Manchester's Devin Bryant right up the middle for the touchdown. Manchester would eventually tie the game up at 35, but with 71 seconds to play, still tied at 35. Martin connects with George Lovelace, and Lovelace will break five would-be tackles on his way down the golden road, bouncing off Lancers as he was a Plinko chip going into the end zone for the touchdown. That would be the game winner as the Springers improved the 2-0 on the year with a 41-35 victory over Manchester. Dirty win. Not dirty from playing, just not a clean game. On either side of the ball, we played like we hadn't played in the game. Uh, so I wasn't satisfied with that, but that's kudos to them. That means they play hard, they prepare well. Our other game of the week candidate came from last night in the Battle of Chester. Number seven, L.C. Bird on the road at fourth rank, Thomas Dale. The Knights had won four in a row and five of the last six in this series. Late first quarter, Dale quarterback Ethan Minter, he's headed to UVA. Look at Minter showing off the moves and capping off the drive with a 28-yard touchdown run. Nice led 7-0 at the break. Third quarter, the nice special teams would come through. Jonathan Gales hits from 38 yards out just over the crossbar to push Thomas Dale's lead to 10-0, and the defense would take center stage. Aiden Jones getting into the backfield for a tackle for a loss that stopped a bird drop. Minter would score again in the fourth quarter as Dale posts the first shutout in this series since 2019, 17-0 over L.C. Bird. But, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to Trace Humphrey and our defensive staff. This offseason, almost every day after practice in our weight room, they stayed after and they worked this defense. And we've got a, a true, true 22 guys that can line up and play defense for us. Um, and the depth that we have on that side of the ball is amazing this year. Also from last night, number six, Verena taking on the defending class six state champs from Freedom High in Woodbridge. Again, first ever meeting between these two programs. Freedom had a heck of a first half. Jeff Overton going to pick off the pass right there and return it back into Blue Devil territory. That would set up Cameron Courtney's six yard touchdown run around the right end and Freedom had a six nothing lead. Later in the first quarter, Tristan Evans goes up top 40 yards to Carlton Preston, which set up a short touchdown, and that gave Freedom a 13-0 lead. First play of the second quarter, Evans, 20-yard pass to Elijah Reed, 20 to nothing. They had a 27 to nothing lead at one point. Verina came back, though. Great second half for the Blue Devils comes up just short as they fall 35-27. Also from last night, number eight, Douglas Freeman. Hosting James River, the Mavericks trying to start 2-0 for a third straight season. James River got on the board first, though, in the first quarter. Will Managbang. I hope I'm saying that right. Two-yard touchdown run, and the Rapids have a quick 6-0 lead. All Mavericks from that point on. Second quarter, it's 6-3 Rapids. Jaden Reese, pretty looking 14-yard pass to Jake Lohman. That gave Freeman the lead 9-6. Then fourth and goal from the eight. Nelson Lane is going to be stopped by Jackson Rogish. 
Lane got picked off by Cooper Spadell, who had a 24 yard pick six. All Freeman in the second half as they win 36 to 6 last night over the Rapids. Down at Matoka last night, the 10th ranked Warriors hosting Warhill out of Williamsburg. A lot of coaches like what they saw out of the Warriors in the preseason, but it was Warhill that would take advantage in the first quarter. Liam Francois. A 35-yard pass to R.J. Foskett to give Warhill a 7-0 lead. Francique added a 6-yard run to make it 14-0 at the half, and they go on the road and knock off 10th-ranked Matorka, 21-7 the final. Might end up being a really good win later this season. Up in Hanover last night, Patrick Henry opening their season with Mills Godwin. The Eagles trying to start 2-0 for the first time since 2007. There was no score at the half. Third quarter, Avery Curtis for Patrick Henry busts off hmm. a 49-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots had a 7-0 lead. Godwin would tie it at 7, and we go to overtime. In the OT, Daniel Viner, one-yard touchdown run. Eagles led 14-7. Patrick Henry answers. Javon nice. Anderson, 10-yard pass to Devin Rose. It's 14-13. The oh. extra point blocked. Eagles walk off in overtime. They're 2-0 with a 14-13 win on the road at Patrick Henry. When we return, more scores and highlights from Week 2 of Final Score Friday. Stay with us.